Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews Now 2, and today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 10 from a USB stick onto our Athlon 200GE system. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so we've built our Athlon 200GE system, which has been upgraded in this uh, pink piece of trash which is behind me. Now if you want to see how that video went then click on the link up here and you can watch that video and see what we went from and what we've come to. So this has been a pretty massive upgrade to be fair. We've gone from an old Athlon X4 620 to the new kind of Ryzen based uh, Athlon 200GE. So we've built the system but we need to install Windows. So we've downloaded Windows from the uh, Windows installation helper or guide, which again, if you want to see how to do that, you can click on another link up here and you can see how to get Windows on your USB stick. But we've already gone ahead and done that, so we can plug this into the computer and start the installation process. Now it's relatively straightforward, so you're going to need a keyboard, a mouse, preferably, obviously the PC, and the connection to the internet, preferably. You don't have to, but for the updates and things like that, it is a lot better. So the USB stick, you want to stick into the back of the PC, not into one of the front USB ports. There have been issues with some front mounted USB ports not installing Windows correctly and causing errors and issues and that kind of thing, so put it into the back of your PC. If, like me, you need glasses, make sure you wear them so you can actually see the USB slots. So everything's on, we've got power to the machine, so we just need to turn it on. And when we turn it on, we need to hit the button which makes your uh, motherboard go into boot options mode. So on a lot of boards, it's going to be F10 or F11, but check your manufacturer to see which one you need to press. Alternatively, you can press the delete key and go into BIOS and then select a, a, a different boot option for your first boot. I'm not sure which button to press, so I'm going to press two. Oh, 12. <laughs> Okay, so when you get your boot menu come up, you get an option for your hard drive, uh, all the other bits and pieces that are connected to the system. So ours is a SanDisk USB stick. So we're gonna scroll down or use the arrow keys and choose the SanDisk drive and hit enter. So now Windows will start its setup routine. Now this routine is pretty much the same for uh, all versions of Windows or Windows 10 that is, uh, be it sort of basic edition, pro, etc. And all you do is choose your language. Now, this has actually uh, chosen the correct language already, so we'll just hit next. And we've got the option to install now. Now, if you're making use of a, uh, a previously used drive or a drive which actually has data on it, then you'll need to go into the, uh, the device and actually remove those partitions or remove that data before you can go ahead. So um, at this part now, it's asking for the Windows key. If you've got a Windows key, great, stick it in now. If not, you can just click on I don't have a product key. And if you click on I don't have a product key, it doesn't know which version of Windows you're trying to install. So you can go ahead and choose which one you want. Now I'm gonna go for Windows 10 Pro. But obviously you can choose whichever version is suitable for you. And unfortunately, you have to agree to all the terms and conditions, and then you get the options of what you want to do, upgrade or custom install. So because this is a new system and we're going to start from scratch, we're going to choose custom. And this shows the drive and all the partitions which are already on it. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and remove all the partitions. which should leave us with one drive letter or one drive showing unallocated space, which is pretty much the full capacity of that drive. If you've got more than one uh, disk showing there, it could be because you've got another disk installed in your machine, but ideally you want it so that it's just one disk showing. So once you've done that, you can hit next. And now we wait. There'll be a few reboots in the process, so now is probably a good idea to uh, grab a cup of tea.
don't forget if you're leaving this as an unattended install to remove your USB drive after the first reboot or shutdown. Otherwise, it will get caught in a loop if you've set your USB to be the primary boot drive. So remove this as soon as you've got the first reboot. Okay, so that's the main part of the install done. Well, at least the initial part of the install done. So now we have to uh, select your region and we're in United Kingdom, so click yes. And the keyboard layout, we want United Kingdom as well. And we don't really want to add another layout, so we'll just skip that. Now there's some very important setting up to do, so we'll let it go ahead and do that. And it says sit back and relax while we do our magic. That is a bit worrying. It might be time for another cup of tea. Depending on the speed of your computer, you may or may not have time for the kettle to boil. Now that set bit there just said let's see what's new from Windows. Um, that's normally looking for updates, I believe. Now you get the option to select for an organization or personal use. Organization is for if you're part of a uh, domain or active directory, but if it's just for personal use or normal use, click on personal use. And this is the point where you get to sign in with a Microsoft account if you wish. Uh, it's optional. Some people prefer it, some people don't. Again, entirely up to you. So we're gonna choose a offline account and we don't want to sign in with Microsoft, again, um, just ask who's going to use this PC, so I'm just going to be a new user, and create a memorable password, well we're not going to do that, because we're going to set up an online account later, and here's the options, if you want Cortana to be your assistant, you can click yes, and speech recognition and all that kind of stuff, yeah, give Microsoft as much information as possible. And they can have full diagnostic. Yeah, what the heck. And you can just agree to everything. Or you can disagree to everything. It's entirely up to you. That is the beauty of Windows and PCs in general. You can do it exactly how you want. Now, a lot of people are probably going to get really mad in the comments and saying, you can't agree to all that stuff. Microsoft know everything about you. Well, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on YouTube. So... Pretty much anybody who wants to know anything about me can find out pretty easily anyway, so this ain't going to make a great deal of difference. Although I might get some more advertising. So now we're on the last bit of the Windows setup. This will be Windows downloading any additional updates, configurations, etc, etc. Now being that this is the Athlon 200GE running on the AMD AM4 system, there may well be some additional updates that are required for the operating system to get the most out of the processor, being it is quite a new... Uh, a new platform. Hopefully it won't take too long. Again, make sure you've got a drink or something to eat while you're waiting, especially if you're a diabetic. Now it looks there as if the um, graphics have just installed themselves, which is a, a good thing. Now I was going to say, as soon as this is done, the best thing to do is to go to the AMD website and download the latest version of the driver but uh, we may be on a pretty recent version already, but we'll see when it's uh, loaded up. So at the moment it's picked up this 1080p display, which is great. And if we right click on the uh, display settings, and then we'll go into either graphics settings or advanced, whichever. So it's picked up the display when it's connected to AMD Radeon TM Vega 3 graphics. So it's pretty much picked up everything that we wanted it to to begin with. We can just check into uh, Device Manager to see if everything else, uh, right, so the SM bus controller, which is pretty important, hasn't been installed. So it's probably going to be a good idea to go to the AMD website. So we'll go ahead and do that now, if Microsoft will allow us. So we go to AMD. And we want drivers and support. And you can choose uh, from your uh, all your products there, whatever it may be. There's a, a large list you can scroll through. So if we go with integrated motherboard graphics, actually let's go with chipsets. 
So let's go uh, AM4, and it's a X370. Obviously, choose whichever chipset is suitable for your uh, your version. So we've got the AMD chipset drivers. Now those are released on the 26th of the 10th, and today is actually the 22nd of November. So it's about a month old. So that's uh, that's pretty good. And if we do save as. Um, we're going to save this to the desktop just to make life a little bit easier to try and find it. Of course, you can save it to whatever location you feel best. So once it's finished, you can double click on it and run it. That seemed to download very quickly. So I just go ahead and install where it wants to install. Again, depending on your uh, memory configuration, etc, etc, this may be slightly quicker for you, it may be slightly slower. And again, as per usual, you have to agree to all their terms and conditions, or you can't install it. And then you choose the, uh, you can choose an express install or custom install. Um, I don't think it makes a great deal of difference either way really, to be honest with you. So I'll just go ahead with express, and hopefully it will install everything which is necessary. And there we go, so let's close that. And now it's asking for a restart. So we'll close all those tabs. Let's have a quick look in Device Manager a minute and see. So yeah, our SM bus has been uh, installed somewhere. But we've got no exclamation marks in the um, Device Manager. So that pretty much is it. Again, you can keep your uh, drivers updated as much or as, as you want to. Generally, Microsoft will try and download the latest drivers or the latest uh, hardware, hardware compatible drivers, the H WHQL, I think they call it. So the, uh, the official drivers, it will download anyway, eventually. Um, if not, you can get them from AMD. But that is pretty much it. So that's how to install Windows 10 on a Athlon 200GE based system with the Vega 3 graphics. Pretty straightforward. It's not really a great deal from, from any other Windows install but it's definitely worth getting the AMD drivers at some point just to make things a little bit uh, a little bit smoother and a little bit more reliable possibly. But anyway, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. If you've got any questions or comments, put them in the section below and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.